Welcome. This is the Life Habits Podcast Series, and my name is Carl Vradenberg. This is the series that helps you to develop new habits to optimize your life and to stay sane in this crazy world. This is episode number 13, and the topic for today is taming technology. I want to help you to make it work for you rather than being a slave to it. As usual, let me start off with some quotes that I think are insightful and to get us thinking on this topic. The first quote is from Stuart Brand, and it goes like this. Once a new technology rolls over you, if you're not part of the steamroller, you're part of the road. Mitch Kapoor, who is the original designer of Lotus 123 years ago, says, getting information off the internet is like taking a drink from a fire hydrant. We'll have some good thoughts on how to have alternate ways of getting information off the internet in a few minutes. Bill Gates talks about the first rule of any technology used in business is that automation applied to an efficient operation will magnify the efficiency. The second is that automation applied to an inefficient operation will magnify the inefficiency. That's really essentially some good ideas, I think, that will get us on the road to thinking about this whole topic of technology that seems to quite pervasively pass through all aspects of our lives with regard to at work, with a variety of ways in which no matter what kind of job you have, you likely have a lot of computer and other related technologies that you're dealing with on a regular basis and even at home. And your kids, if you have them, uh, or almost anything else that you deal with in life today involves some amount of technology. And we, on a regular basis, tend to get overwhelmed by it. And there's so much of it that unless you really have some skills and you've developed them into some real fundamentally good habits, you could really be a slave to these technologies and there's a lot of people that you can see around that are in fact slave to these technologies and uh, you don't need to be and the session that I wanted to talk about today was one on the topic of really trying to harness or or really tame uh, technologies so that they work for you. Now I wanted to introduce the notion that there's a bunch of inputs coming in to you and what you'd like to do is control those interruptions. They're essentially interruptions in your life, there are a number of these. And then there's others that are your outputs, basically, the things that you're wanting to deliver. And those ones you also can control in terms of how much time they take, how involved they are, and when they happen as well. So if you really control these aspects of technology, you will lower your stress level you'll make more time for yourself and you'll be more efficient and after all of that you'll also enjoy life more so this is the topic for today and as usual I've identified 10 ideas for you to consider that are all skills or ideas to develop into skills and then further hone into habits that really can help you optimize your life in the area of taming technology. So let's start with number one. And this first one, a number of you may already be quite familiar with, and that is to use technologies like iPods, or now iPhones, and related MP3 players to multitask. So you don't need to, in the sort of old days of consuming media, it used to be that you would, you know, sit there and watch something or listen to something or read something and then you'd go on to the next activity, you know, serially. You wouldn't be doing it in parallel. And that takes a lot of time typically. And uh what you can do instead now, very effectively, is use things like iPods and MP3 players to multitask and the very thing that you're listening to right now, this podcast is one of the ways you can do that. You don't need to be sitting there with the coffee cup, (laughs) with the uh, icon that we have, or the visual identifier we have for this podcast series. 
you don't have to be sitting there with a coffee cup listening to this uh, podcast. You could, in fact, be driving. You could be walking somewhere. You could be running. You could be doing the dishes. You could be doing the vacuuming. You could be doing any number of things that um, need to be done anyway and be enjoying your life more by multitasking and learning and improving your life by things like podcasts. You can also listen to, obviously, to music while you do that. You can also listen to audiobooks, and this is the other one that I find really, really useful. That, again, there are times when you want to, you know, in bed before you go to sleep, read a book, and the actual touch and feel of a book is really something that is enjoyable. But there are other times when you'd like to read your books, but you don't have the time to do that. And so you can actually optimize your life by listening while doing any number of other things to audiobooks. And audible.com is the place that I get all of the uh, audiobooks that I listen to. And I use, of course, iTunes as the way to subscribe to podcasts uh, as well, which then typically once or twice a week, I just uh, sync up with my iPod to my iTunes and I automatically get all the podcasts that I subscribe to and also get uh, the audiobooks that I have requested uh, as well. So that's the first item that you can actually do things in addition to other things at that same time, essentially in parallel, and uh, do that using technology as well. And, and the other thing, uh, when I talk about uh, uh, subscribing to these podcasts, uh, some people find it difficult to go and have to try to find you know episodes they might want to want to listen to a certain podcast, but. If you just simply subscribe to them, then uh, and you can set your settings for whether you want uh, iTunes to keep the old versions of the podcast or not, or wh once you've listened to a podcast, that you can let it delete it from your computer and therefore from your iPod as well the next time you sync up. That's actually a very good practice for keeping control of your hard drive and all. These uh, podcasts are typically still always stored online elsewhere if you really want to get a hold of it but you don't need to keep them around. But that way you also don't have to spend time trying to find, you know, which kinds of things you want to listen to and all that. You just choose what category, what, what person or what uh, theme of, of podcast you want to listen to, and then you just uh, pull them down automatically, you know, once a week or a couple of times a week as well. The next number two item is dealing with text messaging. And if you're a parent and you want to keep in touch with your kids, you want to keep in touch with your friends, even your colleagues and co-workers, a lot of the time people think that the only way to really keep in touch is to telephone or to use cell phones and actually talk to people. That tends to take a lot of time. And it's also the case that it's often, I mean, some of the time you want to actually do that, you want to actually talk to somebody. But I find that it's actually really quite efficient to use text messaging to keep in touch uh, as well. And, and these are ways that I keep in touch, for example, with my kids that when I'm in a meeting at work, I can't actually take a call. I can, though, very unobtrusively deal with a, te a text message that comes in. So I, I turn my phone on vibrate so I can feel that something has come in. And it may be that they just simply want to have permission to go do something, or they want to inform me that they're going to be doing something, or they're really happy about some mark they got at school. I can keep in touch within the overall flow of dealing with my day-to-day -day work, by being able to deal with those kinds of, of interruptions by not having them, in fact, interrupt my day. There's other people that I work with who take cell phone calls, for example, you know, while they're at work, and that really is disruptive. They also really do uh, miss that part of the meeting and the like. And it's quite frustrating to a lot of the other people that are in the, in the meeting or on the, the conference call. So this is another one of those cases where you want to be uh, doing the communicating very efficiently it takes very little time to do this but you can still keep in touch that way of course the online equivalent of that is uh, instant messaging which also can work the same way so if you happen to be online a lot for your job for example or if even if you are at home you can uh, sync up with uh, family and friends very quickly that way as well and again this doesn't necessarily replace all communication that you might do in you know, uh, talking to somebody in person or actually even on the f on a phone call. But 
there are many instances where you simply want to do a quick little keeping in touch or a yes no sort of response and it's a whole lot more efficient if you do that using text messaging if you're using your phone or instant messaging if you're using a computer or you can also now use instant messaging on a number of phones as well so that's that's the notion of being able to communicate in parallel with doing other activities as well as number two number three is a voicemail and this is again this whole notion that should you be assuming that everybody can interrupt you at any one time why should somebody that's phoning you have any more right to interrupt you than anybody else that you're dealing with in person for example in my experience that if somebody really wants to get a hold of you if you have a a way of monitoring the calls that are coming in whether it's through your cell phone or through your you know landline you can actually monitor see it who it is see if this is a call that you want to decide to take as a phone call or if you really want to let it go to your voicemail and then deal with it in your time rather than being interrupted and not interrupt the flow or the thinking that you were going through at the time that you got that call so you want to be able to then in certain circumstances not take the call instead go to the voicemail and then pick it up later and, and you can even do the picking up of it if it's something that can be dealt with with a quick email or a, a follow-up uh, text message or an email or maybe you want to call somebody back but don't always assume you need to be doing everything by a phone call because that tends to take a lot of your time and I talked to a lot of people say that they don't know where the time went in a day and a lot of the time I see them on the line for a long long time on the phone and they're saying well you know I only was just talking to so and so and so and so and you know it was all sort of work related or it was this this related or I had to deal with this with my kids or whatever but if you do all of that with phone calls that tends to be rather time consuming and it also interrupts the flow of your thinking and the work or whatever it is that you were doing even if you're doing some hobby you want to focus on that for a while and not be stressed out by necessarily being interrupted all the time number three four rather is uh, email and this is uh, one where you want to basically do this uh, at limited times during the day you don't want to be doing this all day you don't want to be jumping on or sitting on email as it's called you want to just basically uh, deal with it uh, process it and then get it over with the other thing that that I would suggest as well is that there are a bunch of filtering mechanisms where you can again determine how much you want to be interrupted or how much time that this th this should take so you can what I do is actually set colors for different types of people that I would be getting email from so I know that if there's certain uh, one comes in either it's a topic or it's from a certain ty type of person I know that I want to do a quick uh, reply to that because that's that's what I've decided prior that is a category of type of email that I want to respond to quickly and there's other stuff that I want to deal with that quite frankly I deal with sort of once a week because it doesn't deserve my time immediately and interrupting again what I'm doing in terms of any number of other things the, the other suggestion is to not necessarily always feel like you need to have a strong or long rather reply to an email you can have a you know few word response if you think that it can actually handle the, the question in that way you know just fire that off and a lot of the time it makes sense to do that quickly to questions that have been sent to you that may well be lengthy themselves but if your response really only takes a few words just say that don't feel like you have to necessarily have a strong well thought out well long written you know response as well the next item is electronic sticky notes this is this notion of how do you keep track of stuff and a lot of people have sort of the 3m uh, yellow sticky notes and they have them all over the place and they lose these things they and if they do a lot with a with a computer they've got them even stuck all over over their computers well there are a number of capabilities now for these kinds of little reminder note sticky notes that are uh, part of Mac part of uh, Windows Vista uh, comes with it there's also uh, a set of widgets from uh, from uh, Yahoo that provides this capability and I, I actually personally just use ones from post-it the 3m company that actually creates the physical uh, yellow sticky notes they've also got a little application that you can get that you can download and actually use and it looks just exactly like uh, those but you can also choose uh, to uh, customize uh, the notes I have ones that are certain color for things that are reminder notes for example for myself 
that relate to work, uh, that's one color, and other ones that are related to my uh, home life, and then I've got other uh, sticky notes that are just right there uh, available to me all, all the time, for example, for all my conference call numbers or a variety of things that I might want to remember, that's another you know, color as well. So I find that these are, if you again work with technology or work with a computer a lot of the time, this is a really good way of always having that information directly accessible to you and it isn't a matter of that you've gone to some other reminder system that has your you know a list of things to do but instead uh, it's always there right in the way that you would normally have done it even using these yellow uh, sticky notes as well and I find that when you use these kinds of things that are right in your face you can do the which is what I uh, advocated in uh, podcast several uh, episodes ago this whole notion of doing your planning of your activities per week so on a Sunday for example I'll do what activities I'd like to be doing on my work sticky note and on my home sticky note for that week and then I get the satisfaction during the week to not only stare at this and get them done but also to be able to then cross them off because they're right there in my face and directly accessible to me as well so I'll, I'll put in the show notes for this session as well a bunch of links to places that you can get these things that I'm talking about as well number five is calendar and diary if I want to uh, use a term that is not used in North America but is used uh, elsewhere in the world as well to refer to this your calendar or daily diary and controlling it now a number of people from work get rather to be slaves to their calendar whether you have an assistant or whether everybody can just book things on your calendar electronically without knowing about it without really controlling it being a slave to it. In other words, you can get yourself totally caught up in basically going from one activity to the next, one meeting to the next, one conference call to the next, all based on the requests that a number of people have made to add these events to your calendar. Well, with that kind of environment, you are a slave to your computer, you're a slave to your electronic calendar. And what you want to do instead is to get control of it. And the way that, or one of the ways that you can get control of your calendar is actually to block it ahead of time. So again, you might want to choose to make your lunch times, for example, blocked all the time. I do that. I block uh, time in the uh, for lunch as well as going to the gym uh, every day. That's blocked. It can be overridden at times, but those then are the exceptions, right? Same thing with if you don't want to have meetings earlier than a certain time of the day or later than a certain time of the day, you can block your calendar for those as well. And you can even, as I've said in previous uh, podcasts, you can al also even decide on certain days that you decide that you'd like to identify as being good blocks of time that you're just going to use for work time. Because you don't always have to be in meetings. You don't always have to have conference calls. And again, these things can be overridden, but the overall objective of this getting control of it is to make the, the overridden instances the exceptions rather than the rule, and thereby you have more control over your day-to-day -day activities. I think the other one uh, is to, number six, is to control, again, the settings on a variety of elements, like I said earlier about things like the your phone, that you don't just automatically get interrupted. You can also do the same thing with things like instant messaging, or quite frankly, even on your, on your office door, you know, where you're, you indicate that you're not to be disturbed. You want to have and, and take away time so you don't get uh, disturbed all the time, especially through these technology interruptions. Often if somebody were to come around to your cubicle or your, your office and they see you, you know, heads down really deeply into work or thought or reading something, they're likely not going to interrupt you. But if you're getting interrupted by or if you'd like to, to ask somebody a question that is just accessible to you through, for example, an instant messaging system, which typically still indicates whether you're available or you're busy or in a meeting or you're, you, you shouldn't be disturbed. If you're listed as being available, which is usually the default that most people just leave on, then they don't see that you're actually heads down really thinking hard and that really shouldn't be disturbed right now, right? So another good practice here to get into and develop into a habit is when you're about to do some piece of work that you really don't want to be interrupted during then s set your instant messaging status 
to you know not being available and you can even give the details of what it is that you're working on just so they've got some notion of what it is that you're doing and whether for example something is still really important that they should still still be able to interrupt you uh, for it because some emergency just happened or whatever and, you know that's that's fine again too but you're by default you're basically saying by the way please don't interrupt me during this time or absolutely don't uh, interrupt me during this time as well so those again are systems that are really really useful but they're ones that you just have to give a little bit of thought forethought that is to deciding how it is that you would like to be able to be interrupted or not and you gotta remember of course when you finish the activity and this is where you get into the habit right where, where the skill turns into a habit when you now uh, are just about to do some piece of work and for example you know while I'm recording this podcast for example I made sure that my instant messaging uh, systems are either turned off or are indicated as being do not disturb because I also don't want to have any you know uh, beeping sounds coming in right now on my screen and nor uh, do I have the brain space to be able to right now respond to any of those instant, mes instant messages but I have to remember that when I'm finished recording this I want to turn that back on again and be available for chats as well again and if you don't do that you can easily find yourself after a whole day of people saying you know I couldn't get a hold of you all day what's going on and you turn you know forgot to turn off that instant messaging status setting that uh, indicated that you were doing some work earlier in the day that you really didn't want to be disturbed during. So again, developing it into a habit is this notion of saying, I'm about to do some uh, piece of work, change your setting, do the work, don't get interrupted. And after you finish that, make sure to go back again and turn that setting off again as well. Because the other thing that I should mention as well is that there's been a lot of recent evidence on the effect of interruption on our work. And uh, while all these systems are really, really good for communicating and communicating instantly right around the globe, the reality is that you need to make sure that there are certain things that you do that have a contiguous block of time for you to do it. Because when you do get interrupted, evidence has shown that you're much less effective because you t constantly have to be catching yourself up again. If it was reading something, for example, you got to go back, find where you were. You know, if you were thinking through something, you're writing something, you need to go back and reconstruct where you were in your thinking before you were interrupted. You do that a lot and you end up getting a rather not only a really inefficient day, you also are getting yourself into a situation where you just are getting less effective work done too because your thinking process for example is being interrupted all the time so you don't want to be you know doing that as well the other thing that you should be taking into, into account as well when I talked about the notion of different types at times during the day and uh, being sensitive to blocking uh, your calendar saying you don't want to be contacted before or after this time the other thing you need to be sensitive to to as well is that when you're working with a worldwide audience the topic we talked about last time in the last episode in uh, dealing with a flat world you also want to make sure that there are times that you can be available to be contacted for example on instant messaging in the off hours for you in your time zone but that it might be during a convenient time for others as well. And as a result, and I've uh, seen this as a be best practice and several people that work for me that deal with work uh, a, a worldwide audience, that then also uh, adjust their calendar so that they may well take, set, let's say, a couple of hours uh, in the middle of their day in their own time zone, take that off. But yet they're going to make themselves available for, for work or, or be at least available on instant messaging or for conference calls for example you know much later in the evening but uh, and they're finding this is actually quite convenient because they can do certain types of you know shopping for things for gifts or even you know groceries some of the time you know in the middle of the day or they want to go to the gym during the middle of the day or whatever that uh, that's a great time to be doing it and not have to be at work that whole time during the typical work day but then they're also more conveniently available for colleagues that they might want to speak with at off hours and that then makes it really convenient and more efficient for those other team members that are not in the time zone that you're in as well. The uh, number seven is really to leverage social networking sites and th this is one of these cases again where you want to guide or guard rather against the notion of getting completely 
you know, immersed in these systems. And what I mean here is that things like Facebook, fa things like MySpace, and there's a whole pile of these now. And while you can get sucked into them, I think, again, you want to schedule your time for dealing with them. Uh, you shouldn't be reluctant to get involved in them because I think there's huge benefits. I've personally con uh, reconnected with people from way back in my life, either way back in terms of time or, you know, colleagues that I haven't worked with for many, many years, and it's great to reconnect with them again and not necessarily have to, again, be uh, involved in their lives to an incredible degree or they with mine, unless I really care to be, but I can also just keep up with, you know, what it is that they're doing on very efficiently and rather enjoyably still to be able to keep in touch with people you really cared about and people that you dealt with, you know, many years ago and or in other lives, so to speak. And so this again, though, the suggestion is one of time boxing it, basically organizing it so that you're only spending a certain amount of time, you know, daily, let's say, or even weekly, you know, signing on to those systems and then uh, making sure that you're uh, you're getting the appropriate kind of information that you were looking for, you know, little chats back and forth, writing on somebody's wall, you know, uploading some pictures and stuff like that. But fundamentally, you want to uh, make sure that you, you limit it but then enjoy it and, and don't don't necessarily be reluctant to get involved in these things because you think that they're going to be an incredible time burner. They can, in fact, be dealt with quite efficiently. Number eight, I was reflecting on the quote that Mitch Kapoor off the top talked about. Getting information off the Internet is like taking a drink from a fire hydrant. A lot of people look at the Internet and think, oh, man, there's just so much information there that... How could you possibly keep up with this? And people try to follow certain websites and they try to on a regular basis go to those sites and to keep up with, let's say, their, their discipline or their areas of interest or even their, their hobbies to see what, what's new that's on the uh, Internet. And there are actually ways of really harnessing the Internet much, much more effectively. And that way that I think is uh, really effective is using RSS. That refers to uh, really simple syndication. This is this notion of that there's essentially a file that's created for each website that basically describes what's new on it. And there are systems that, uh, little tools that will go around RSS files around the, um, the internet on the topics that you've selected and go find what's new. So what you can also use is essentially an RSS reader, and I'll, again, I'll, I'll include some links to suggested ones that you might want to consider, where now you're not having to go and find all this information yourself all around the internet. You instead can just identify what kinds of topics, for example, you want to follow up on and learn about. I use Google Reader, for example where I can just simply specify a bunch of keywords that I'm interested in and the frequency with which I'd like to be told about them. And I then get an email in my Gmail inbox that at a frequency, let's say, and I, I do them on a weekly basis. Now you can get them on a daily basis if you want, but I think that's, again, the fire hose type thing. <laughs> uh, what I tend to get is once a week, I get a summary of all of the activity that's happened on the internet that's related to the topic that I chose or the several keywords for the topics that I chose. I then can just peruse those lists and see if there's anything interesting that I'd like to follow up on and then go read those articles. But I don't have to go find them, but it's also a way to make sure that I didn't miss anything. And it's really, you know, the Google Reader folks use the little uh, catchphrase that it's the inbox for the web is what they refer to it as. And it really is. It's a matter of saying, hey, look, you don't any longer need to be using the Internet as just something that you need to go to all the time and try to figure out. You can actually get a lot of it to come to you. And very ideally, you get to filter it. Just like I was talking about filtering email, you can also filter this stuff and say, hey, look, I don't want to have everything. I only want to have things that are related to this or this or this topic as well. So you can get those directly in your in your inbox and you can deal with them when you want to. Another one that's uh, kind of related to that, a more recent little fad is a thing called Twitter, which is uh, like a mini blog. And you get 140 characters of information. So that in itself is nice and short. So you don't have to go read lots and lots of material, but you just get these 140 characters. 
And if you uh, subscribe to a bunch of essentially Twitter feeds, you can get feeds from your friends and the updates that they make and that they want to tell you about and the things that they've been reading or whatever. You can also follow other people that you admire and or that you would like to find out about what they have to say. And you can uh, follow, uh, so-called follow them and then you get their updates, their 140 character updates, which also often include a little short URL to the material that they're talking about. And you can also subscribe to certain news services, for example, that you can get just quick instant news if you care to look at it on things that are happening around the world. Again, it flies by and so you don't don't need to necessarily be attending to, to it all the time and you can also limit it. You can unfollow people so-called. But it's again another way to very efficiently with very little content and with, a, with very little reading be able to follow up on a variety of topics that and people that you would like to follow up on as well. And the other one that's sort of related to this is to also go and do a bunch of your services. So things like like banking, you know, if you haven't done that already, that's a very efficient thing to do on the web. Still find lots of people that do all kinds of things on their computers and on the web but don't do online banking or ordering, you know, airline tickets for example or buying things, you know, buying books, you know, buying online <laughs> books, buying buying hard copy books, buying electronics, buying even uh, uh, any number of other things, you know, online. Now, there's lots of, you know, guidance on how to make sure that you're not doing things inappropriately there, and little guidelines that are all over the web for doing that. But fundamentally, this is something that, again, is hugely efficient for uh, ordering a number of things that you normally would have had to go and drive to go and do, like for example your banking or things like you know buying your books. It's it's very very efficient to go do these things online, and you get this stuff you know uh, sent directly to your home. Or in the case of things that already are electronic, like moving money around, you can do that online with online uh, banking. Number nine is, uh, and this is not necessarily directly just computer or internet related uh, uh, technology, but there's all kinds of other technologies she should look to see if they could help and improve your life. So I'm thinking of things like if you're a runner, you know, heart rate monitors, they're not very expensive. You know, they're, uh, they're, they're really, really useful to keep track of your health and also your progress in terms of the running that you're doing. Also, GPS uh, systems, there's a lot of these now available for cars, see a lot of people with these. There's really no excuse uh, to stress yourself out anymore in terms of, you know, needing to go to a particular address for a party or if you're picking up your kids from some place and you're driving late at night trying to find their, you know, a friend's house that you're picking them up from or whatever. Uh, no need to be stressed out with all of that and have to go do, you know, printing off a bunch of maps before you went or, you know, try to be looking at uh, this stuff or calling them constantly and trying to get directions while you're driving and possibly getting into a, a car accident. GPS is really a, a quite a marvelous uh, way, especially now with the prices that have gone down significantly on this, to be able to take that aspect of your life and really be uh, never stressed anymore with regard to trying to figure out where the heck you're going and also, you know, how far you are from your de destination, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Other ones are things like if you're going to go do some extra exercise, we talked earlier about previous podcasts, talked about uh, fitness, talked about things like if you can't get to the gym, you should be, you know, buying yourself, for example, a treadmill, uh, which I did, and I strongly, strongly recommend it. And also, if you can afford it, just get a little better one, because you'll really, really, really uh, glean the benefits of that as well. There's some hugely good uh, technology there with all kinds of bells and whistles that are actually fairly easy to access as well that can monitor your progress and give you a whole training exercise uh, regimen and a plan that you can go through as well. Other ones are things like DVRs, things where like being able to record uh, you know TV programs so you don't have to, to be watching them at the time that they occur but that you can uh, save them up and again control your time right number 10 uh, suggestion is to unplug entirely so we've got lots of technology here we've talked about all kinds of ways in which we deal with these technologies ways of being able to control them so that you can 
not be interrupted when you don't want to be interrupted, that you can choose how you would like to be interrupted if you're going to be interrupted, as well as you can choose how you're going to and when you're going to respond or do anything as well. Within that overall approach, there's still one other last very important suggestion and a skill that once you really hone this one into a habit will be a very useful one to you, and that is to just take a sabbatical, take a break from technology. And this goes for, you know, kids if you have them, you know, have uh, totally technology-free days, also you yourself too, that take certain days that you just choose that you're going to turn everything off. Now, for emergencies, you might still just want to leave your, your, your cell phone on or whatever, but there are days that you're just not going to touch any technology and nobody's going to be able to interrupt you at all. And that, too, is important in this overall environment where we all are so, so heavily wired. A lot of that stuff and a lot of that wiring that we have can improve and make our lives more efficient and more enjoyable, but there are also some times that you want to just be away from technology entirely and plan for that as well, because that's important as well. So that's the overall topic of trying to tame technology so that it can work for you rather than you being a slave to it. As usual, I'd recommend that you choose one of the things that we've talked about here and do that this week. You know, plan to do it. Don't just say, oh, that's some interesting ideas. I'll think about it again sometime. Choose one. Choose, uh, you know, the notion of the sticky notes, for example, on your desktop. You might want to try, you know, doing that. You might want to just try this... Um, RSS feeder approach to keep up on things on the on the web. You might also just want to start using text messaging. Every uh, phone has it. You can uh, try, you know, that as well. So the upshot though is to really make sure that you choose something and then start doing it. And with all of the topics that we talk about in this overall series, we talk about ideas with regard to skill development that are good skills and trying to get out of bad has skills and bad habits, but you want to take your good sk skills, practice them, really get them so that they're routine, and once they become routine, they start to become habits. And once they're into the form of being a habit, then you do them without really thinking about them. And as a result, if you have a number of those in terms of good habits, then you'll definitely be improving and optimizing your life and as a result staying more sane as well. So that's it for this week. I really have been appreciating all the uh, feedback I've been getting as well as the increase in popularity in this uh, podcast series in iTunes and elsewhere. Lots and lots of people are now listen to it, listening to it. And I thank you all for uh, your interest and also for your feedback as well. And if you haven't provided feedback, you can provide ratings and commenting. Uh, you can write a review within iTunes itself. You can also go to lifehabits.podbean.com and you can provide ratings on individual uh, episodes. You can also provide comments on them. And of course, you can always write to me. My email address is lifehabits at gmail.com and you can provide me any feedback there and any suggestions that you have for topics for future episodes as well. So that's it for this episode. We'll talk to you all next time. Bye for now.